So this is the unicorn themed glasses holding desk tidy thing. Catchy. There are simple ways of doing this and there are other ways that involve a lot of over engineering and overthinking and you know the stuff that woodworkers like to do. I did get input from my daughter and she said unicorn. So we have to incorporate that as well. I drew a plan. It doesn't look anything like that plan now because it all went wrong halfway through and I had to improvise, you'll see. So I think the first thing we're going to have to make is the base because well, I'm planning on routing in, first of all, my daughter's name into this, which I think is gonna look awesome just on the front there. But also I'm going to route out grooves where the boxes will sit to keep them upright. All of this could go horribly wrong, so let's try that first. Now, I am no expert at drawing these freehand, so I just printed the designs onto a piece of paper, and then with my brand new Pika pencil, link in the description, I love this thing, I just shaded the back and then that transferred the picture onto the wood and then I drew over it. This is quite obviously my first time freehand routing and the only tip I can give you at this stage is soft hands, take your time and don't try and go too deep in one motion. went surprisingly well. I honestly thought we were going to have to have quite a few shots of this. So next, I'm just going to cut this up and I'm going to laminate it together to make it into a base so that it's wide enough to fit all the boxes that I want to put on it. Then I've got to try a harder routed picture. If you're planning on jointing boards for yourself by hand, open them up like a book, put them back to back. That way when you join them together, any slight angle you put on one will be matched on the other inversely and they will cancel each other out. That made sense, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's a little bit open at the outsides, but when I put clamping pressure on, that's just gonna ensure that the middle is tight. So you'll have it tight both top and bottom of the joint. Then what we're gonna do is just glue and leave this. And while we're doing that, we're then we're going to work on some other stuff. I'm no artist, but that has got one, two, three, four legs, one horn. And what do you need? Now I'm just going to route this exactly as I did before, sticking to the lines. Now even though this is a much more complicated picture, it is still much the same as when I did my daughter's name in the base. You just have to take your time, do one line at a time, and I found pulling towards me was easier than pushing away from me. Better than I thought I'd do. There we go. So we're gonna get the boxes cut to shape before we do anything more to the base. And for this, I've got a really cool bit of kit for a small workshop. Have a look while I'm using it. This is the Craig Crosscut Jig. I think that's what they call it. I've lost the box. Had it a while, but I've never set it up and used it. The idea here is to get your circular saw as close as you can to a table saw. So it runs along the rails, cuts the piece of wood to the size that you want, and hopefully does all of that with a 90 degree angle left at the end. We'll cut them, we'll test them, and I'll show you when we've got them all put together. It should basically help us put a box together really quickly. Now we've cut all the box parts. They're going to be fitted together to make a very long box, like that. And that's gonna to be to hold pens. But I want to put a rebate on the insides 
because I want it to be a little bit sturdier. It needs a little bit of possibly another section in the middle, otherwise pens are just going to fall flat inside it. So I'm going to cut one more piece of these and then we're going to use the new router table to put the rebates on it. And hopefully nothing is going to go wrong. It did go wrong. The miter gauge is no way strong enough to stop the router pulling the wood towards it and leaving a completely not square rebate, which will ruin your box. I did, as you can see, I did make it work with the big box, but things definitely went awry later for the smaller ones. You'll see. Now you've got the rebates how you want them, lining up with each piece as much as you need to, and with enough space so that you can sink the blocks into them. Just needs a little bit of a clean up, and then we can start gluing the box together. Except for one thing. I might put a rebate in so that I can sink the base a little bit higher up. And also, I forgot to rebate the middle one. Okay, so the dry fit's done. Everything goes together nicely and nothing's getting in the way. Be careful with that bottom panel. You want it to move a little bit, but you don't want it to hinder the outsides or move around too much. We're gonna put a dab of glue on it to stop that. I'm now just gonna take the time to sand the inside, take it through 120 up to 180. I'm not gonna go for too much of a special finish, but you won't be able to get in there later. So doing it now is perfect. It's quite hard to see here, but I actually used a soft pad attachment to the sander which I'll leave a link in the description for, which fits the Makita perfectly. It's really good for sanding the rounded over edges. It is not great for sanding the flat surfaces. You don't get quite as good a finish. So I would definitely recommend taking it off for the sides of your boxes. I've got to stop the project where it is because it is major confession time. My big plan was this bigger box that I've now done roundovers on the edges and is ready to go pretty much, just needs a final sand, was going to sit at the back of the Sapili base that we made. And then I was going to make two smaller boxes to sit on the front. I was going to route an area that they could sink into and it would keep them all in one place uh, and, and then put something for my daughter's glasses in the middle. Now, this is where the problem started to arise. The two boxes, although on a quick glance, may look like they are perfectly square. But I assure you they are far from that. If you have a really good look, not only are they not square, they don't even match. There's also one other big problem and this is the last of the wood that I have that matches the back box. When I realised these boxes came out wrong, and I'll tell you the biggest reason that they did is my router table. I didn't put a sacrificial fence at the back, so the router pulled the pieces into it slightly, which gave the dados a slightly off square look about them. Blaming my tools. So before I finished up, I decided to cut some 45 degree angles on a bigger plank of sapili that I had, and then I made these boxes that are mitered. So the plan I've got is that I'm going to put these as the boxes on the front and at the moment they are way too big because what I want to do is put them on the front here and have them kind of drip down into the sapili beneath them. So I need to cut them a lot smaller and feather them down into the board. I'm going to really hack at them and hope that the last thing that comes out will actually be a nice product. And hack at them I did. The aim here is to make the sides much thinner and leave a wedge at the bottom. Then I can sand that concave and that will eventually blend into the base. For me this is quite ambitious and a little bit trial and error.
Now I just took the boxes outside and on the drill I've just taken off all of the edges trying to get it so that where I chamfered it to a 45 I could then blend it into the side of the box. This is by no means a perfect solution and in hindsight a router bit would probably have done a cleaner and more accurate job on this but I don't have one. Now I'm just going to take some sandpaper, I'm going to wrap it around a dowel and I'm just going to try and smooth those two edges in together all the way around. Okay so that's the sanding bit or the first bit of the sanding bit done. What we've got now is the base and I've got my two boxes that are going to be moulded into it. What we're missing is actually <laughs> what the primary reason for this was and that is something in the middle that's going to hold my daughter's glasses when she's not using them so we don't lose them. Everything just needs to be blended in. I need to tidy up the base. And then we're pretty much good to have a go at sinking this into it and fettling everything up so that it all... What's fettling? I don't know. And then just fine tuning everything so that it sits nicely on the base and... Looks, it looks good. I'm no expert, but I don't think that looks very much like a unicorn's horn. So, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to router out the area for this to sit in. I'm going to try curving the edges of the base so it flows up into these boxes. And then, and then, I'm going to try and make this look a little bit more horn-like. So I want to quickly show you guys something. I'm just routing out the groove for the box at the back to sit in the base. So I've drawn around the box and then my plan was to stick some scrap across it and use a templating bit on my router. Problem is, I've already rounded off the edges. So the blocks that I've got aren't going to sit easily because there's no wood to stick them to. So solution, I've used double sided tape. I'm going to pop some blocks on the same height as this and then I can put the template on top of that and it'll keep it nice and secure while I route. You'll see. If you, like me, are trying this for the first time, you will soon realise that the trim base on this Makita router is way too small. It does not sit stably on top of the template. I quickly switched it out and you'll see that the plunge base actually does a far better job with lots of shallow passes and it is more accurate. It will need a good clean up afterwards because without dust extraction it's going to throw chips everywhere. I have an idea for the horn. I'm going to groove it out, I'm going to make a spiral pattern from top to bottom and with no power tools I'm going to have to rely purely on files and elbow grease my favourite thing. I finally dug out this really coarse needle file and now we're getting somewhere. Finally a quick groove for the glasses and this horn is done. Now before I can glue everything together here it's going to need another sand. No pad for the flats soft pad for the edges. That was not an easy glue up. Um, I've got the I've got the glasses hold a horn on there, I've got the boxes locked on and everything sanded down to about 150 grit. Now the transition between the boxes and the base here was bugging me. You can see it's slightly too convex, so I set about blending it. Or is this what fettling is? Now you saw there, I did most of this with the gooseneck scraper, thinking that this contour would get into the concave area better. Trouble is, it dug into the base. What I didn't realise is, that is exactly what this is for. Flat for the base, curved for the concave. Too late now though. Let's spray a little bit of lacquer on this and what you're about to see is exactly how not to do it. 
I feel like on this, I thought I was maybe applying some graffiti or something. What you really want to do is slow, light, even passes. If you miss anything, you'll catch it on the next layer. Sand it just before your last one and do a very light last coat. You cannot get it wrong unless you apply it like graffiti. So that is the finished piece. My daughter can keep her glasses on there. She can keep knickknacks in there and pens at the back. It's going to keep the desk nice and tidy if she remembers to use it. That might be the next challenge. I really hope you guys have enjoyed that video. I hope that it gives you a little bit of confidence to know that mistakes are not going to make or break a project. You can work around them and improvise. The channel is called Start Making and I really hope that I've inspired at least one person to get out there, pick up some tools and make something. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy that one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you over there.